From Dandelion Studios, my name is Joey Helpish, and this is a live reaction slash uh, musical analysis using emotional music theory of the song Love You The Way You Lie by Eminem and Rihanna. So there's been a bunch of controversy, right? Uh, about uh, supposedly Gen Z trying to cancel Eminem for the last line of this song. And I thought I would use uh, this opportunity as a song therapist. By the way, I'm a song therapist. I write songs for people as a form of therapy um, and teach them to do that sort of thing on their own also. Um, and I use this a form of emotional music theory called Root Motives that I invented with my partner Kirsten. And I thought I would apply that to this song and do kind of a live reaction. I haven't heard this song in years. Um, before we do that, let's just quickly explain what root motives are or emotional music th theory. So um, there is this thing called the major scale. Major as in a big deal, by the way. Everybody's heard that. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Basically, almost all modern pop music is based off of this scale, no matter what key it's in. In this case, I believe this is B flat, but it doesn't matter um, because the distance between notes is always the same. And then, so that's uh, the melody of a song is going to be based off of these seven notes. And then the chords, the harmony in the song is based off of taking each note in the scale. So we'll take that first note, then we'll add two notes up in the scale or two steps, and then two steps up from that, play them all together, oh, we have harmony. So, in the major scale, the first chord, the one, is love. And then as we go up, it goes love, longing, sorrow, hope, power, despair, transition, and then we're just back to love, okay? So there's seven chords in a scale and seven root motives, these emotional root motives. So we're gonna flip over and we're just gonna watch this video and I'll just stop it as we go to kind of explain musically and emotionally what's going on here. Just gonna stand there and watch me burn. Well, that's all right because I like Okay, so we're using the four chords, first of all. If you don't know what the four chords are, look them up after this. This is just what songwriters refer to, uh, these four chords that are used a lot, the one, five, six, and four, or we call it in root motives, the empathy progression. Uh, and that's why it's used so much, because it goes from love to power to despair to hope. That's not the pattern that this one is going. So you can see, so this, here's the standard four chords. No woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. And I want, I know who I want to take me home. There's just so many songs that use that progression. But if you do the same pattern, but instead of starting on the first chord, you start on the sixth chord, you start on despair, it sounds like this. Just gonna stand there and watch me burn. Okay, so we're going despair to hope to love, to power, except there was this really cool song called Zombie by the Cranberries. And they did this progression because in the 90s, this progression, uh, this empathy progression is used all over the place. But what they did instead of, and I could hear it already, instead of going to power, they did this chord, which I call the saddest chord. This chord is three things at once. It is power, it is that fifth chord with the second note added, which is its sixth. So in this case, it's a major six chord, um, which is power with sorrow. It is also just sorrow, but the way that the guitar is played to where they diminish the root note of the chord of love um, is actually love broken into transition. So we'll start this again and I'll kind of call them out as it happens. So it's uh, despair, 
then hope, then love, then broken love. And that's the progression. That's what's going on through this whole song. While she's hanging out on the third and second notes between sorrow and longing, Okay, this is important because he does this right off of the bat. This is really important to understand the context of the end of this song. He says, I can't tell you what it really is. I can only tell you what it feels like. What this song really is, is an, it's a confession of feelings. It's an exploration of feelings. Um, and uh, so let's just keep going. But um, I just find that really interesting. Uh, right off the bat, he's like, we're talking about feelings, buddy. <laughs> okay. What's it feel like? My windpipe, I can't breathe, but I still fight. Well, I can fight. As long as the wrong feels right, it's like I'm in flight. High off a law, drunk from my hate. It's like I'm off in pain. I love her the more I suffer. I suffocate right before I'm about to drown. She resuscitates me. She fucking hates me. And I love it. Wait, where you going? I'm leaving. Right there, he says, she fucking hates me. But I love it. Wait, right when that broken love chord is being played. That's interesting. You. Also... Um, his, even though he's rapping, it's kind of atonal, but he is hanging out on the root of love and dropping down to despair when you hear his voice get a little sing-songy. Okay, a couple things. First of all, he's, he's first personing. Um, he starts off by saying, um, I can't tell you what it feel or what it really is. I can only tell you what it feels like. And he's telling from his perspective, from the character, by the way, that's the kind of artist he is. Um, and what's really interesting is the it's the confessional part of both people. And I just have a feeling, I don't know very much about Rihanna, but I, I do know enough about Eminem to know that He's experienced all three sides of domestic abuse like I have. Uh, and that's why I haven't heard this in years, but uh, I cried a lot the first time I heard this because not only have I been on both sides, um, been the abused and been the abuser, I've also been a kid in this situation with parents who had this really toxic, intoxicating love for each other. Um, and... Okay. And right there, that confession she makes, that's all right because I love the way you lie, happens during that broken love chord right before it drops into despair. And in this verse, he changes perspectives again. So before he's saying, um, this is what it feels like. This is it. And then he's doing the same thing, but flipping it. He's talking to us. He's um, trying to get you to imagine what it feels like. So he's referring to the main character now as you. He's stepping aside um, and telling, making, having the confession, but trying to get you to understand to have a little bit of empathy Guess the 
just really, I just love the way from verse to verse, how he does that, man, because he's really trying to put you in the shoe. He First, he puts himself in the shoes of the main character, and then he puts you in the shoes of the main character, trying to get you to understand what it feels like. Look, I'm focusing on the the whole music part, right? Uh, but this video is so well done. Um, just the imagery and the dinginess and the the realness. If you've ever been on any of the three sides of this situation, uh, you know, man. I know we said things, did things that we didn't mean, and we fall back into the same patterns, same routine, but to temp- This is the shit that gets me. He switches perspectives again. All while going over these chords that are the most empathetic chord progression ever. That's why we keep using it for songs that are that really resonate with a maximum amount of people. He switches perspective again, and so at first he's just He's talking to you and just telling you how he feels. And then he's talking to you and he's trying to get you to understand what it's like to feel these feelings. And then he's talking to the victim. Um, And in this case, probably oftentimes also the abuser. That's not to take away from pieces of shit that hurt people. Um, But this kind of this kind of relationship, especially where I'm from, um, and kind of what I'm from is really common. And it's usually from children who grew up watching their parents do have this kind of relationship. And they just think that's what love is, um, because they don't really have any other model for it. Um, but right here he's switching and he's talking, um, to, uh, in this case, the woman. As bad as mine is, you're the same as me. When it comes to love, you just as blinded. Baby, please come back. It wasn't you, baby, it was me. Maybe our relationship isn't as crazy as it seems. Maybe that's what happens when a tornado meets a volcano. All I know is I love you too much to walk away, though. Come inside, pick up your bags off the sidewalk. Don't you hear sincerity in my voice when I talk? Told you this is my fault. Look me in the eyeball. Next time I'm pissed off. Man, that visual of him asking for forgiveness and her giving in, and then as he as the rap is going on and he's getting more angry, they really do a good job of showing that, that when they're going room from room to room. There's so many freaking reasons why that line is so genius in the context of this whole song. So in this verse, he's begging and he's pleading um, and he's making all these promises. But at the end, he switches perspective again. So he's talking to the woman, but then he turns around at the end and he's talking to himself and to us saying, I know this is these are lies and that the next time um, she tries to leave again. It's going to be the last time because I'm going to take drastic ef- uh, efforts and I'm going to tie her to the bed and catch this house on fire. And here's the here's the thing that Eminem does so good. Like, look, uh, there are a lot of reasons to not like what Eminem does. Uh, the way that he talks about uh, gay people is not okay. Um, but there is no denying the genius and the writing um, and... What he does in songs, the plot twist, he's always a big plot twister. And the plot twist here is that he is referencing the chorus, that the chorus all of a sudden takes different meaning. It's like this metaphorical, you're going to stand here and watch me burn. And then he's like, um, then he is, then when he says, next time I'm going to catch this house on fire. Then stand there and watch me burn takes on a new 
context, they do this really well in the video because during the chorus, the whole time they're standing in front of a burning house and it seems like a metaphor until you realize that in the story at the end, that what they're, what's happening is that they're standing in front of the house that the main character of the song set on fire. Boom. So there we go. So and I just want to run home again. Um, and I'll just say the words so that you really understand why this song is so emotionally effective. We start off with despair. Just going to stand there and watch me burn. That way, stand there and watch me burn. Oh, I got to listen to it again to make sure I get the timing. <laughs> I, if I was into editing I would edit this part out I love the way you lie I love the way you lie I love Okay just going to stand there despair and watch me burn hope That's all right love that's all right because I love the way it hurts and then that broken love chord just gonna stand there, despair, and hear me cry. Hope, which is it's it's a nice contrast, isn't it? Um, that's all right. Love, because I love the way you lie. Cool. Would love if you have any questions, leave a comment. Would love to hear your perspective or what the experience was like on this. Um, be nice. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, and uh, I hope you have a badass day. I love you.